This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, health care workers at the Down East Community Hospital in Machias walked out and went on strike today. It's the first of a two day strike by nurses and technicians to protest what they say is the administration's refusal to, to address their concerns about recruitment and retention. A statement from a hospital spokesperson says there are no outstanding negotiation proposals from the union that involve safe staffing, safe work conditions or patient safety. The nurses and technicians have been negotiating a contract since September of 2023 and they've been working without a contract since mid-October. We're here for our patients, we're here for our community and we're fighting for our community and we want our hospital to um, focus more on patient-centered care than profit generating. We're really lacking in support staff. Um, you know, if, if our nurses and techs are having to do jobs of secretaries and CNAs because there aren't any of those, um, then, you know, it, it takes away from our patient care. A statement from Julie Hickson, the Director of Marketing and Communications for Down East Community Hospital, says, quote, the union chose to strike over wage negotiations. Over the past four years, the DECH union members have received unprecedented increases of 40% or more in their wages. We are extremely competitive on our current wages, and to put significantly more money into the union compensation would not be financially sustainable for the hospital. As always, we will continue to negotiate with the union to finalize an agreement, end quote. The hospital says contingency plans are in place to address the strike, and they will continue to provide safe, quality health care to the public. Meanwhile, the investigation into a fatal shooting in Bangor continues. Divers have been in the Kanduska Extreme looking for evidence in connection with the shooting on Highland Avenue that happened on April 2nd. 24-year-old Daniel Ford Coates of Bangor was pronounced dead at a local hospital after being found with a gunshot wound shortly after 4 a.m. 20-year-old Olivia Babin has been charged with manslaughter in that case. Advocates calling for changes to Maine's child welfare system rallied at the State House today to spread their message on the last day of April, which is Child Abuse Awareness Month. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke with those in attendance to learn more. We often say how terrible events are the catalyst for change. How much more terrible does it have to get? Walk a Mile in Their Shoes is an organization formed by former state senator Bill Diamond with the mission of ending the deaths of children in state care. He says despite the increase in awareness, the problem is continuing to get worse. In 2021, we had 34 children in state care that died, and that was a, a record number. And not to be more uh, depressing, but in the last two years, 54 children have died. One of the speakers at the rally was Mary Ann Spearin, a superintendent for two school districts who says oftentimes the voices of educators who are legally required to report suspected cases of abuse and neglect goes unanswered. We make reports to the state hotline. From there, we trust that it goes somewhere else and that somebody else is then following up with the kids and the family. And having been in the school systems, I know that it went days sometimes without that happening. One of the other topics touched upon at the rally is the need for more to be done to increase transparency and regulation for DHHS. This past legislative session, lawmakers had the opportunity to separate the Office of Child and Family Services from DHHS. That bill passed in the Senate but was killed in the House. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to continue the discussion because, as you know, it passed in the Senate. Uh, and so I think the House, we could have some good discussion about it. DHHS has said they will be taking into consideration suggestions by Walk a Mile in Their Shoes and other groups for how to improve the safety of Maine's children. Diamond says he'll be paying close attention. What we're going to do from this point forward is we're going to hold accountable the changes that we're hearing may be made. At the Statehouse, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. 
On Monday, Governor Mills made her final decision on two pieces of gun control passed by the legislature. The governor allowed one of the bills, a 72-hour waiting period for all firearm purchases to go into law without her signature. This bill will affect all purchases made at licensed gun shops. The governor vetoed a bill that would have banned bump stock-like devices, citing the bill's apparent ambiguous language and the fact that a federal ban on bump stocks already exists. Gun control advocates say they're thankful for the laws that did pass this session, but disappointed at the veto. What a momentous day this is for Maine, um, that we are now going to have expanded background checks and 72 hour waiting periods is an enormous shift and a really big step in the direction of gun safety. Um, we have further to go as, uh, as is um, evident in the fact that she vetoed the bump stock ban. Um, so we have taken great strides and um, we there, there are more steps that we need to take um, in order to um, uh, really do all that we can to reduce gun violence in the state of Maine. Because the waiting period bill was not passed as emergency legislation, it won't take effect until 90 days after the legislature adjourned. The legislature will return to take up vetoed bills in the coming weeks. Secretary of State Shenna Bellows is asking for the public to weigh in on the wording of a referendum question on November's ballot. The question centers around limiting the amount of money that can be donated to independent political action committees. Those groups are not associated directly with a candidate, but use money to support a candidate. Currently, the question is worded, quote, do you want to set a $5,000 limit for giving to groups that spend money independently to support or defeat candidates for office? End quote. Secretary Bellow says asking for public input can help ensure that the question makes sense to the average voter. And as secretary, my job is to draft the question, but this is the people's question and will be the people's vote. Therefore, it's really important that members of the public have an opportunity to weigh in on the content of the question. We've posted a draft question and now people have 30 days to share their point of view, not on whether the question is a yes vote or a no vote, but is the question clear? Is it concise and direct as possible? Submit a comment or learn more, you can visit the Secretary of State's website. That's right there on your screen. Well, switching gears now, a former China resident convicted of multiple sex crimes against a child under the age of 14 is now challenging that conviction. Jared Jandro was found guilty of five counts of unlawful sexual contact, one count of sexual solicitation for gross sexual assault, and 17 counts of sexual ex exploitation of a minor. During testimony at his trial, Jandro's ex-girlfriend Jessica Cox admitted she is the woman who took the photos of the child and sent them to Jandro. Prosecutors say text messages were evidence Jandro persuaded Cox to send him sexually explicit photos. Part of Jandro's challenge centers around the scope of the warrant that allowed p a police to obtain the messages and pictures. No one disputes that when you have an alleged GSA, between a defendant and a victim, each party wants every communication between those two. It'd be, it'd be insane to ask otherwise. No decision was made today, and it's unclear at this time when one will be made. Somerset County Sheriff's the Somerset County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant in Madison where they found a truckload of marijuana plants and processed marijuana, along with other assorted drug-related documentation and paraphernalia. This bust was led by Somerset County Sheriff's Office with assistance from the Federal Jug Drug Enforcement Agency, Homeland Security, and other agencies. More than 1,800 marijuana plants and 10 pounds of processed cannabis were seized in the operation. Although no individuals were located at the residence, charges are expected against the individuals responsible for the illegal grow operation once the case is reviewed by the Somerset County District Attorney's Office. An additional detail, out of 14 similar illegal marijuana grows that the Somerset County Sheriff's Office has interrupted, they say this residence had the worst case of black mold infestation in the interior of the buildings. So yet another Another ginormous another, bust there. Yeah, another one of those cases, and it really is becoming kind of 
you know, I don't want to say a regular occurrence, but we're seeing quite a few of these cases for sure in our communities. We absolutely are, and it's uh, pretty alarming. It is alarming. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's switch our focus yeah. now. Peeking outside today, uh, <laughs> picture perfect. Yeah, no complaints, yeah. I think, from yeah. either of us there. Um, you know, as we kind of inch closer to summer, we're, we're yeah. starting to kind of get those uh, those more summer-like days. Today wasn't quite there yet, but yeah. it, was, it was really nice. Just that nice, strong, bright sunshine is very, very nice to see, that exactly. is for sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and see what else is coming tonight with a uh, first check of our forecast. Thank you very much, Beth and Peter. Our first weather today is brought to you by Physical Therapy and Balance Centers, providing relief to people who are experiencing issues with pain, dizziness, or balance. Physical is spelled different because, of course, they are different. Look at these temperatures, folks. 61 degrees earlier today. Once again, just felt warm like a spring day. A bit cooler, though, by Rockland. Check that out. Not as lucky. Only around 50 degrees. Waterville, mid-50s in the area. Now, lots of thick clouds in the region. Even a couple of sprinkles here and there. This is very light and very scattered, but we are going to be looking at more chances of rain the next five days. Now the winds, look at this. 13 mile per hour sustained winds in Rockland, 15 in Bar Harbor. Of course, those wind gusts, they're closer to 30 miles per hour in some spots, and at times that will be continuing. Now throughout the day today and then into those overnight hours, we are looking at scattered showers. Temperature wise, though, we're going to be back in those mid 40s. Beth and Peter. All right, so a bit of a rainy overnight heading our way then. Indeed. All right, well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, Maine has received federal funding to expand its broadband network, and your input could help decide where the money goes. And safety preparations underway at the Penobscot Bridge Observatory as they prepare for opening day. We'll have those stories and more as ABC 7 News at 6 comes right back. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving, located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Machaya Savings Bank is proud to partner with Coastal Women's Health. We want to be partnered with a company that's in Maine, that understands Maine values, but is committed to staying with Maine businesses and partnering for the future. In the near future, Coastal Women's will be expanding our space to allow us to take care of um, more patients in Southern Maine, and we're happy to be partnering with Machias to take care of our needs in that expansion. Machaya Savings Bank, the bank of yes. Raise your flag this spring with a new flag from Flags for Patriots in Bangor, providing flags for your home, state, business, or organization. We stock flags from all states and many countries, banners, bunting, poles, and accessories. Visit our website and order your new flag today. Are your basement walls bowing, crumbling, or failing? Hi, I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems. All things basementy. Our stable lock wall system offers a patented, affordable, and permanent solution to save your foundation walls. It stabilizes, fills voids, and structurally repairs, leaving a new smooth surface. All the strength of new walls. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basementy. When the Coach House Restaurant wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. The Coach House Restaurant, family dining at its best with fine home-cooked meals, delicious homemade desserts, and a large menu of tasty offerings for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Recently, Maine was awarded $272 million in federal funding to help expand broadband in the state. And now you could help determine where that money goes. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard explains. The statewide challenge process is the, the next step in our BEAD journey. That's our the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program. Brian Allenby is the communications director for the Maine Connectivity Authority. He says the state was awarded over $270 million in federal funding to help expand broadband access in the state. They've started a state-led challenge process for municipalities, tribal nations, and nonprofits to participate in and share their data with MCA. Uh, there are a number of different types of challenges. 
everything from whether the service that's reported to be available at a location actually is available, um, whether the, the speeds reported at that location are actually delivered. Of course, if you're not a municipality, tribal nation, or nonprofit, you can still participate in the process by doing an individual speed test. The, what's unique here is it's a little bit different than some of the speed tests you've seen in the state of Maine in the past. We need three separate speed test samples from that same location over three different days. Um, the system is set up once you register your speed test the first time, you take your first test, it'll send you a reminder email each successive day. So you just have to go back and, and take three of those tests. The reason why the challenge process is so important, Allen B says, is because they're working from older data from the FCC, which may be outdated or inaccurate. It's really important that um, those organizations as eligible challengers and individuals um, can take part in the statewide challenge process to help us understand where the data in that FCC map isn't accurate. Main Connectivity Authority will take the results of these challenges and determine how the funding gets distributed based on the needs of the community. To learn more about the state-led challenge process, you can visit our website. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. All right, and coming up in sports, the University of Maine rugby team is coming off of a national championship this past weekend. We'll have that story coming right up. When the acres add up, so does the work. The Kubota L02 series is ready for it. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience. It features powerful, dependable Kubota diesel engines, performance match detachments, and the versatility to get the job done right. Available at Doors Equipment, 1468 Outer Hammond Street, Bangor. In times like these, saving money matters more than ever. Lydia saved her family $450 by switching to AAA auto insurance. And Frank switched and saved over $350. Just like you need to take care of your family, we consider you a part of ours. AAA is here to help you with your auto, home, and life insurance needs. Call 844-AAA Insurance or visit AAA.com for an auto insurance quote today. AAA, we're always with you. Mesothelioma is more than a ravaging illness. It is a disease that can ruin a family's finances and is never the victim's fault. The law offices of Joe Bornstein has been fighting and winning for Maine families for nearly 50 years, and we've collected over $500 million for injured Mainers. If you or a loved one is a victim of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, call Joe today for a free case evaluation and to learn about your family's legal rights. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio in Bangor, located in the Penobscot Plaza, providing custom ink by licensed artists for more than 20 years. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's go up to Orono, where there are some newly minted national champions. Over the weekend, UMaine Rugby winning their first ever national title. The Black Bears defeating Georgetown 19 to 15 down in Washington, D.C. to take home the Men's Division II Club Championship. Maine was down two scores in the final period, picking up the win with this sudden death try by senior Brett Benham. A few members of the team on Tuesday said it was an amazing experience for everyone involved. It's such an incredible feeling to score that, but at the end of the day, it's, none of it would be possible without the hard work of my teammates. We've been working for all year, and to see it come to fruition like this is, is incredible. I laid down and started crying. You know, seeing everyone put in a lot of work, making a lot of sacrifices. Everyone who's doing this isn't doing this because they're getting free college out of it. They're all doing it because they're having a good time. Coming away with this kind of uh, reward is, is awesome. It is awesome, and they are hoping to reap the benefits of that reward and the buzz surrounding their big win. The program has been steadily building year over year. This isn't their first trip to Nationals recently, and the win is a chance to bring more people's attention to the club and to the sport itself.
As a non-varsity program, you know, not a lot of people know about us. We're definitely hoping um, going forward a, a big accomplishment like this is going to bring in a lot of eyes and, you know, get a lot of people excited about the sport. And, you know, as someone who's played rugby since seventh grade, uh, it's really cool seeing the sport grow. And this is a really cool opportunity to kind of bring this sport that we love to, to the people of UMaine. And it's awesome right there. Let's go to the baseball diamond now. At the high school level, the Hamden Academy Broncos are off to a blazing start to the spring. The Broncos are 5-0 in a top Class A North right now, coming off of a win over second place Meselonski on Monday. Hamden has not scored under seven runs in a game yet this season. They're averaging just over nine runs per game, and it's no secret that the offense has led the way so far. We have a bunch of guys. We have at least two guys at every position who can play it and who can be at almost a starter at anywhere else of their school you look at. Um, and it's just great because every time we play, you know, if one guy goes down and is not having a hot night, we can just send one more guy in there and they can do just as good of a job, if not better. I think the number one biggest thing is our hitting. Um, we've historically been pretty, we've had a hard time hitting in the past couple of years, and I think. This year, our hitting just come together. Nine runs a game is impressive, yes, but this team is experienced. They have four seniors and seven juniors on the roster who all had varsity experience last year. So they know they're not going to pour in nine runs every game, and the other side of the ball is going to be the most important down the stretch. I think our hitting is going to be off and on. You can't, it's pretty hard to control that, but if our defense can get better and stay better through the rest of the year, I think we're just going to be that much better off. Definitely defense. Um, our defense has lacked in some games and our offense has picked it up, but um, sometimes our offense is going to be, you know, not on. So our defense is going to have to pick up within the first, the next few games. All right, that is all the time we have for sports. Here's Conrad Sipinski with your full five-day forecast. Conrad. Thank you very much, Tyler. Our main weather today is brought to you by Washington County Community College. Discover choices, create success. Don't miss out on free college and weather. Why is the wow? Some violent storms down south over the weekend. We had one confirmed EF4 tornado in Oklahoma and nine EF3 tornadoes. Devastating stuff down south. They are starting to rebuild, but more chances of severe weather is popping up in Iowa and Nebraska right now. Now that line of showers goes all the way up into North, South Dakota, even into Minnesota. So a very active pattern the last several days, and that is likely to be continuing at least the next couple of weeks. Now, same story for us. We're going to continue to see those on and off showers for now, though, a good amount of clouds and more rain will be back in the region overnight tonight. We're not talking anything heavy. This is going to be more on the light to moderate end, but still showers are back. Do not forget those umbrellas overnight tonight and then into those morning hours tomorrow. Overall, though, tomorrow's going to be a pretty decent day. We are looking at that rain moving out, but not for long. More rounds of rain will be continuing to move into the area in the next several days. Now, take a look at these winds, folks. 13 miles per power in Rockland, a little bit stronger in Bar Harbor. There's even pockets of around close to 20 mile per hour sustained winds with those wind gusts around 30, even 35 miles an hour at times. Now let's talk temperatures, right? Something good, something nice and warm. Finally, that push of warmer air made its way all the way into Wisconsin. They even saw some 60s and 70s out there over the weekend. But with these warmer temperatures, of course, more of that Gulf moisture will make its way up north and things start to get a little bit unstable and a lot of severe weather has been popping up over the weekend Friday Saturday into Sunday and once again into the day today mainly into the Midwest Iowa and into that Nebraska area Average high, 60 degrees. Take a look at this. Next several days, we're going to be closer to average, maybe a couple of degrees below average. Same story into the weekend, and then possibly a rush of even warmer air makes its way into the area by beginning to middle of next week. Now, for tonight, though, we're going to be looking at those mid-40s in general, though, mainly cloudy skies with more thicker clouds rolling in overnight. Scattered rain showers will be in the area of very light breeze here in town, more of a stronger breeze right at the coast. 
lows for tomorrow, though. Maybe a couple of sprinkles here and there. Overall, though, mainly cloudy skies. Temperature-wise, though, we're going to be in those upper 50s. Lights, uh, the winds will be light and variable, so very calm winds, maybe up to 5 to 10 mile per hour breezes. Overall, though, pretty calm winds. Our extended forecast outlook does show more chances of rain on Thursday, a little bit of a break on Friday and Saturday. Uh-oh, what happens here? By Sunday, more chances of rain. Temperatures back in those mid-50s. Beth and Peter? All righty, Conrad, thank you so much. And we have more to come. Stay with us. Great. Scott, this is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I got to get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's going to take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. Thank you for helping us have a great start in 2023. When we started, we wanted to make sure that North Star could help everyone's needs. Whether you own a business, you're a homeowner, or a contractor. Or you have a big project that you need a big dumpster for. We have what you need. Front load dumpsters, roll-offs, and our transfer station, and so much more. And the best part is, our prices are unbelievable. If you don't have one of these, you're paying too much. So who cares if your trash gets picked up? At North Star Waste and Recycling, we, we care. care. Hello, this is George Whelan with Down East Direct Cremation. Now, anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, from the comfort of your desktop or the convenience of your mobile device, you can summon transport and arrange a simple, affordable, respectful Down East Direct Cremation for your deceased loved one. Just by using the button exclusively at DownEastDirectCremation.com. All you need is the location address of the person who has died, their vital statistics information, a valid credit card for payment, and that's it. No need to pick up the telephone, no need to answer a bunch of questions, no need to come into the store, and it's still just $9.75 complete. It's so easy, even I can do it. For more information, visit us at DownEastDirectCremation.com or call us at 207-225-5332. Simple, affordable, respectful. The button, only at DownEastDirectCremation.com. Welcome back. In preparation for the opening of the Penobscot Bridge Observatory in Prospect, employees spent the beginning of this week practicing ways to evacuate the structure in the event of an emergency. Our Jody Hersey followed along during their training. We're beginning our descent. The Penobscot Narrows Bridge Observatory attracts thousands of visitors each year. Guests who ride the elevator to the top to see views like this. The bridge, which is owned and maintained by the Maine Department of Transportation, is operated by the Friends of Fort Knox employees. Those employees spent Monday and Tuesday training on how to evacuate the building in the event of an emergency or if the elevator itself experiences a malfunction. The elevator is not the only situation. We might have a, a heart attack. Well, there's an AED at the top. We might have a cardiac arrest. All of those things are part of the training that we do, the first aid and CPR and the AED, just so we're ready. Michael Locke has been employed with the Friends of Fort Knox since 2013, and he's held just about every position. It's just like in the fire department, you know, you practice and you hope you never have to use it, but when you do, it becomes a more an instinct than, oh gosh, what do I do next? On Tuesday, the employees went down flight after flight of stairs, experiencing firsthand what it would feel and sound like if they had to evacuate guests. Practicing these emergency exit drills, Martin says, is all part of getting the Penobscot Bridge Observatory ready for opening day. Probably three years ago was the last time that we did uh, a, a stairwell exit. Kathy Hartigan says trainings like this help ensure that everyone knows what to do. If you're in a situation we do need to evacuate a beautiful building like this. Things are in place to make it easier and safer for everybody involved. In Prospect, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And both the Penobscot Narrows Bridge Observatory and Fort Knox open for the season tomorrow. Always an exciting announcement, but you know, the things that you don't think of, mm -hmm. you know, you just go there to have a nice day. You probably don't give a second thought to the fact that they had to do that kind of training right. to keep 
you know, visitors safe. Yeah, and uh, yeah. props to Jody for um, climbing all of those flights Wolfing of stairs. it down those stairs, my yeah, goodness. Just to bring us that great story. Indeed, it looked <laughs> fantastic. Thank you, Jody. Alrighty, yeah. folks, well, that is going to do it for us. From everyone here at ABC7 News, take care and have a great night. And join us over on Fox 22 News tonight after this.